Hi, I'm, I am Sumedha Puhami, ICT teacher, Maharashtra College, Nigambo. Today, we are going to discuss about process management first presentation. In the early presentation, we have discussed about the file allocation. If you didn't watch, watch that, just watch that and come to this presentation. So how the operating system is managing the process? Before going to that area, first we will discuss how to write, a, write and execute a high level programming language, HLL, high level language. So I have given here small python program x equal int input first number we are closing to bracket y equal int input second number then we are taking the sum sum equal x plus y and print sum so you will have learned about the python programming language language and here we have assigned two with uh, values to the variables x and y that is integer type so what you are going to do you are going to add that two values and you are going to take that thing to some variable and finally you are going to print the result now the same thing first one second one third one and fourth one here i have explained get number three get number four add together and fourth one store the result in the memory and output the result so the same thing I have written so any person can understand this any person can understand it with the with the simple English language which I have written here but here I have used the programming language Python right that is a kind of high level language C language Fortin and Pascal so these are high level languages so what is a high level language? A language that is closer to human language or we can write the programmer to write programs that are more or less independent of a particular type of a computer. So most of the time when you are writing the computer programming language we have to think about the hardware devices too. Okay. So here, the code that we have written with the high level language, we can call as the source code. Okay, what is source code? Source code means a program that is written with the help of the high level language. Okay, now what you will have to do to execute this program, you have to convert it to object code or to the machine code okay so here you have the program so that program you are going to convert to machine readable format okay so that is we are calling as object code or the machine code so when you convert it it will give it ones and zeros so here uh, think this program has converted into binary format to make it simple we are converting that into the hexadecimal see first one just think get number three so that one has converted into binary so that is representing it 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 so we are converting that into hexadecimal to read it easy 6a 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 2b just think the other instruction a b 3c okay so what we have done the program that we have written the source code we have converted with the help of a language translator into uh, its object code or to the machine code now here you can see the high level language with the help of the language translator we have converted into the machine executable code some instructions okay now here you can see whatever the program that we are executing that is inside the RAM now random access memory so here you have the instruction set 6a, 2b, ab and 3c so this is first instruction, second instruction, third instruction and fourth instruction these instructions we have to fetch into the CPU for execution can you remember about the von Neumann architecture so here 
what we have to do to process any instructions we have to fetch each instruction one by one into the CPU so here you can see we are using bus to transfer the data in the main memory into the CPU so what is a computer bus what is a computer bus it is set of physical connections it can be a circuit or wires through that what will happen it will transfer data or the instructions hold inside the main memory into CPU one by one so that is we are calling as fetching fetch instruction so after fetch what will happen the CPU will start processing these ones so when you consider about the bus we have discussed about three bus what are the three buses data bus control bus and the address bus I think you all can remember these things so what is data bus it allows data to travel back and forth between the CPU and the RAM when you consider about the address bus what will happen the address bus carries the information about the location of data in the memory okay what is control bus it manage all the activities in the system so here you can see the instruction so here we are having the program hello.py I have stored the early program with the name of hello.py py is our extension python extension so here we have stored our source code now what will happen with the help of the language translator we have converted it to object code so object code it contains the machine code which is uh, by code which is hold all the instruction one by one first instruction 6a 2b ab and 3c so these instruction having their own address locations now what will happen with the help of the buses data bus address bus and the control bus it will send data to the CPU now here in the CPU there is a queue uh, so whatever the uh, instruction that you have given 6a is coming there, coming here then the second instruction 2b third instruction ab uh, fourth instruction 3c so like that it will hold in a queue so what is a queue it is a collection of processors in the main memory that are waiting in the main memory that are waiting to be executed by the CPU what is a queue it is a collection of processors in the main memory that are waiting to be executed by the CPU so what will happen with the help of the operating system the OS uses different scheduling techniques scheduling techniques later we are discussing about this to distribute resources for each process now the instructions are there so this instruction has to send it to the CPU through the buses then what will happen the operating system has to give whatever the resources that is required by each process okay so when you send it to the CPU now here inside the CPU there are many processors math process is there is there to do the whatever the calculations now inside the CPU there are many registers program counter memory buffer register memory data register memory address register current instruction register many registers are there okay these registers helps to store whatever the values that is required by the uh, ALU for processing uh, program counter okay um, memories okay control unit so many things are there so I think you can remember these things now if you want to see a process in a computer how you can see a process now you can take the task manager windows task manager when you take the windows task manager you can see all the application that you have loaded so here 
you can see word processing process management word process management uh, chrome uh, processors and traits so all the things are running here okay so here i have used two applications word processing and the web browser so both applications are running at this moment now we'll see in the application we'll see what kind of relevant processors are there now when you go to processors here you can see google chrome what will happen chrome exe chrome exe many chrome exes are there so that means in one application uh, with the, uh, when you consider about the web browser many processes are running on see with the different memory capacities ok uh, so this is the web browser the relevant processes are there so that means when you consider about one application one uh, software program when you are running that there are many processes are going on ok so if you right click on a processor if you right click on a processor here you are having the process processors ok if you right click on one process what will happen this process also dividing into some other units smaller units so that is we are calling as thread can you all understand so what we have done we have started web browser when you are running the web browser many relevant processors are running under that web browser with different capacities so that is displayed on this windows task manager if you have right click on one process you can see the process also divided into some smaller units so that is we are calling as thread so here you can see when you have right click in the chrome properties you can see the threads uh, thread id start time so like that many many attributes are there ok we will move to the next one right so we are going to now only we are going to discuss about the processor now you are having some small idea what is a process what is a thread at, at least you have heard that names ok so process what is a process this can be thought of as a program in execution this can be thought of as a program in execution so that means when you consider about the program when you load it to RAM ok now already you have converted to the object code or something ok now this one you are sending it to the CPU for processing ok you are sending a process into CPU for execution so that thing we are calling as the process ok this can be thought of as a program in execution ok right so there is a program that whole program can execute at once in the CPU so whatever the program that is executing in the CPU we are calling as a process ok whatever the program that is executing in the CPU we are calling as a process right what is a thread as we have seen in the previous slide a program can be divided into some smaller units so that is we are calling as thread a thread is the unit of execution within a process a thread is the unit of execution within a process a process can have anywhere from just one thread to many threads so when you consider about a process a process can have one or more threads we have seen that in the previous slide so here you can see many right when you go here for the for one application we are having many processors when you right click on the process and when you go to it properties you can see the threads so one process can have many threads ok right now here multi thread application so what will happen here we are going to discuss about the multi thread applications 
multitasking preemptive so we have discussed about these things now here you can see this is the word application now think this is word application here we have user process 6a comma 2b a b and b c this is some set of instructions okay this is set of instruction that can process by the oh that can execute by the cpu okay and here another set of instruction that is excel application another set of application that can directly execute by the cpu right remember about that now here you have given the priority priority is 2 priority is 10 and here we are using a software called scheduler here we are using a software called scheduler so we are having two instruction set the word instruction set and excel instruction set that can execute by the cpu directly it has the priority 2 and priority 10 that means other applications also running in in this cpu okay but mainly we are going to discuss about this the second pri uh, priority and the 10th priority we are going to discuss now here we are we are having a software that is we are calling as a scheduler it will schedule whatever the task related to the computer okay so uh, whatever the task that is going from the main memory to the cpu so it's like acting like a switch uh, it will switch to priority 2 uh, because of it has the highest priority okay given the priority and it will execute in the cpu if the enough resources are there that means output input output resources and other things so it can execute and terminate the process okay right so here there are two instruction set so that means multitasking so uh, this cpu can perform two tasks at a given time so multitasking okay we are calling that thing as preemptive preemptive program later we'll discuss about that now when you consider about the word processing there are three processors it required the keyboard it required to print the document and it required to save the file so with the help of the keyboard you can input the letters characters whatever things that you want so that is one process printing one process save a file another process so many processors are handling by this uh, cpu okay so what is a scheduler this is a essential program that is used by the operating system to manage process activities it handles whatever the instruction that you have fetched and after executing that after finishing that thing it will remove and this scheduler with the help of the scheduler we can give the priorities to the process okay priorities to the process what is in the main memory so here you can see this is the main memory main memory right and uh, uh, whatever the instructions that you are sending from main memory to the cpu and what is in the secondary memory so normally there are three types of schedulers long term scheduler short term scheduler and medium term scheduler okay so the long term scheduler handling all the things that is going from the ready state that means from the secondary storage it will take to main memory okay short term scheduler it will handle all the things from main memory to the cpu short term then uh, we are using midterm scheduler to handle all the things that is in the that is sent into the secondary 
memory. Later we'll discuss about that. Now here with the help of the priority. So what is priority? Each process is assigned priority to the processors uh, with the highest priority is to be executed first and so on. Process with the same priorities is handled with first come first serve basis. This can be decided based on memory requirement, time requirement and the resource requirement. Okay, So when you consider about the priorities, what will happen? The priorities are based on the requirements. Uh, it can be time, it can be memory, right? It can be resource. Okay, so whatever the highest priority we have, we have given is execute first in the processor. So here, this in this Word and Excel, highest priority is there for the Word application. So this instruction will execute first and terminate. Okay, right? Then. After finishing that only, the priority is given for this 10th one. Okay. Uh, for some schedulers, what, what will happen? They are giving time slices. Okay. For each and every task, only 2 seconds. 2, mi two milliseconds. So, within these 2 milliseconds, what will happen? It will shift here and there to give the priority to the other applications. Okay. So, here you have given preemptive scheduling. Okay. So, what is primitive scheduling? Allows a running process to be interrupted by a high priority process, whereas in non primitive preemptive scheduling, any new processors has to wait until the running process finishes its CPU cycle. Now, here what you all have to know, familiar with these terms. Preemptive scheduling, non preemptive scheduling. Preemptive, what they are discussing? They are discussing about the priorities. Priorities means you can handle two or more tasks. Okay. If any task with the highest priority, what will happen? The scheduler is giving that uh, instruction set the priority and executing the CPU. Okay, so that is we are discussing in this process state diagram. But now, just familiar with the terms. Preemptive scheduling means you can handle two or more tasks. But in non preemptive scheduling, what will happen? It is not giving the chance to other application. Okay, it will take some instruction set, a process or a thread, and it will execute in the CPU. After finishing only, another task can perform it task. Okay. So, pre emitive scheduling allows running process to be interrupted. Whatever the running process, it is stop execution and sending it to somewhere and giving the chance to higher priority instruction set and finish this task and after that, it can process the stopped task. But in non preemptive scheduling, any new process has to wait until the running process finishes its CPU cycle. So that means there is no multitasking. So it will take one instruction set that can execute by the CPU. It will execute after termination only the other application can come. Okay. So one task at a given time. That's all. The period of time for which a processor is allowed to be to run in a preemptive multitasking system is generally called the time slice or quantum. The scheduler is run once every time slice to choose the next process to run. So sometimes there can be a time slice. So as I said, for each and every process they are giving a time slice. Uh, so here we are not going to discuss about the priority time slice. So here for this one 2 milliseconds, this one 2 milliseconds. Think. Now here it has uh, 
6 milliseconds to complete its task but here it will send to execute to the CPU doing 2 milliseconds and sending it to somewhere giving the priority to the other task it will perform 2 milliseconds after finishing that the first task having another 2 milliseconds it will perform its task whether it's finished or not if it is not finished it has to store somewhere if it is finished you have to terminate right like that it will shift till the required time finishes okay right now the scheduler here I have given some questions but here I have given some uh, the seven question we have to discuss about the scheduler I said about that earlier too scheduler is a program uh, that handles all the operations according to the operating system so when you think about the CPU scheduling algorithms many algorithms are there later we are discussing about that but you have to know some small terms uh, there are something called throughput so these things are asking for the exam throughput it's a it is the amount of work completed in a unit time okay throughput means what it is the amount of work completed in a unit time so we are having a unit time in the cpu they are they are giving a unit time so within that unit time you have whatever the number of processors okay has completed we are calling as the throughput then uh, turnaround time what is turnaround time it is the total amount of time spent by the process from coming in the ready state coming in the ready state later we are discussing about the process state diagram just remember this thing ready state for the first time to its completion okay what is turnaround time it is the total amount of time spent by the process from coming in the ready state for the first time to its completion uh, after it comes to CPU so the time that is uh, used to completion of its task ok what is waiting time waiting time that is the total time spent by the process in the ready state waiting for the CPU ok uh, still not started inside the CPU it is in the ready state ok what is waiting time waiting time is the total time spent by the process spent by the process in the ready state waiting for the CPU so what is response time response time means what it is the time spent when the process is in the ready state and gets the CPU for the first time ok right that is the time spent when the process is in the ready state and gets the CPU for the first time so that is we are calling as the response time later we have to discuss about the bus time and the arrival time later we will discuss about that for now just go through these things right so with that I have asked the questions what is high level language language translator executable code what is a process so all these things we have discussed now right so what you all, what you all have to do you have to answer these things if you have any doubts you have to uh, mail me ok so you are having the email address as well as my telephone number you can contact or you can email whatever the questions that you are having so here I have given preemptive and non preemptive scheduling preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm may takes the CPU away from a running process before it has finished its current CPU bust a non preemptive CPU scheduling algorithm will allow a running process to complete finish it current CPU bust so just go through these things familiar with the terms then we will discuss about the process state diagram 
after that okay uh, thanks for watching my video if you have anything just mail me or contact me thank you